It's been a week since a judge cleared Howard K. Stern of felony conspiracy charges in the Anna Nicole Smith drug trial, and now Stern is speaking out. He's going to join us live in a moment, but Mike Von Frem starts us off. Mike? In life, Anna Nicole Smith always stole the spotlight in her shadow, by her side, in good times and bad. She was my best friend, my lover, the mother of my daughter. It's everything to me, literally everything, the whole world. They first met in 1995, when Howard joined the 26-year-old Bombshells legal team. She was fighting for $800 million from her 93-year-old deceased husband's estate. I'm not a gold digger. I went out and I made something of myself. And people don't appreciate that. Excuse me. But Howard seemed to appreciate her, staying with her all the way to the Supreme Court, where they won a moral victory, but no money. Freaking genius! She went on to become America's most watched train wreck, starring in her own reality show. Get out of my face. Come on, Anna. Just get out of my face. Howard's growing influence in her life made people wonder if he was a best friend or an enabler. In 2006, he claimed to be the father of her baby, Daniel Lynn, but a paternity test would eventually prove otherwise. Her 20-year-old son died of a drug overdose that September, but less than two weeks later, Howard and Anna were exchanging vows in a commitment ceremony. After her death in 2007, he was first convicted, then last week exonerated, of illegally helping her obtain prescription drugs. These last four years, there's no way to put it into words how difficult they've been. Stern says he has no regrets because he so loved and cared for Anna Nicole. For Good Morning America, Mike Von Frem, ABC News, Los Angeles. And Howard K. Stern joins us now with his attorney, Stephen Sato. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Howard, I can only imagine what that moment was like one week ago. Yeah, it was, it was incredible just because I knew that um, I was vindicated, Anna was vindicated, who she was as a person was vindicated, prosecution's fa false portrayal of her was exposed. But, and you say that you were thinking of Anna Nicole as you heard the decision. Absolutely, absolutely. I was looking up at the sky and in my mind I was talking to her. What were you saying? Just that, just that she's been vindicated. You know, it's been a long, tough road, and her real medical problems, it, just the judge's words, he really got it right. He got it right, and it just the jury verdict was a stunning repudiation of the prosecution's case, and Anna suffered from chronic pain. And well, that was the reason she took prescription medication. And what the judge said is, I certainly believe she was not an addict under the law. Uh, and, you know, as you say, that to, her, to you that is vindication for her, yet, yet at the same time, uh, she's no longer with us. Um, even though you weren't found legally responsible for providing those drugs in an illegal manner, do you think you enabled that harmful use by her? No. You know, Anna had her doctors and she had her medical problems and I saw her suffer. I saw her suffer for years. She didn't take medication for fun or to get high. She took medication so she could deal with daily life. Well, d deal with daily life, I mean, that, that, that is what drives people uh, into drug problems, relying on the drugs to deal with she daily life. Well, George, if, if I might say something Certainly. on that, we were in trial for almost two and a half months in which Anna's daily life was uh, inspected, gone over in gruesome detail, and a jury decided that she was in pain, she needed the medication, that she followed her doctor's advice, that the doctors uh, treated her as they were supposed to, and that Howard acted properly at all times. The only issue that was still remaining was one dealing with false names, and that's what the judge cleared Howard of. So I think there's a common misperception, almost a presumption, that she was uh, uh, improperly using drugs. And uh, the jury repudiated that, and the judge did as well. And that's not just on a lawful or legal basis, that's on a moral You're basis. You're saying on a human and moral basis as well. So then, then, then looking back, Howard, is there, is there in Mike's piece, he said you have no regrets. Is there nothing you would have done differently? Well, look, Anna meant everything to me. 
And if what you're asking me is if I could go back in time with what I know now, absolutely I would do that. But as you know, in life, you don't have hindsight. You don't have the benefit of 2020 hindsight. You live life in the present. And I did the best I could, and I know the doctors did the best they could at the time. You're right, there are no do-overs uh, in, in life. But knowing what you know now, is there, are there any crucial moments you can identify where you think she and you could have taken a different path? For me, if, I mean, if you're gonna ask specifics, it would actually be when I was working on the Supreme Court case that you know, I think there were things that, that Daniel had going on in his life that I, I missed out on. And I think that, to me, that was the crucial moment. Daniel, her son. You know, I, I shouldn't have, I focused too much on work and not enough on, on what was going on with Daniel at the time. And I think, George, again, if I may add, the time when Anna was pregnant with Danny Lynn, we're talking about the last few months um, July, August into September of 2006. Those were incredibly happy times for Anna, for Howard. Um, they had relocated to the Bahamas. They were basically expecting a change in life. Things were going to be different. And then they lost um, Daniel. And she just never recovered from, those, right. from that loss. And I think it's very difficult for people to understand that uh, to Anna, Losing Daniel was like losing life itself, and, and, and she was in a state of uh, despair until the date of her death many months later as a result of that. And that is certainly understandable. Of course, we all remember that the paternity suit, a uh, case where you had claimed that you were the father, Howard, of Danny Lynn. It turned out that the father was Larry Burkhead. Uh, how is Danny Lynn doing now? Are you still in touch with the two of them? Yes, I am in touch with both of them, and Danny Lynn's just beautiful. She's you know, obviously a little over four years old now. She's doing very well. She's very happy. Larry's doing a great job as a father. And as you say, it's been a little over four years. We're coming up on the four year, fourth year anniversary of Anna Nicole's uh, death. What are you going to remember most about her? To me, she was perfect. She was just sweet. She was smart. She had a good heart. I just, to me, she was everything. And what's next for you? Well, and this is important to me because having sat as a criminal defendant, and, and I know that in my case there was, it was difficult because I knew what the truth was, but at the same time I knew what the perception of me was in the media. And I'm very grateful that I had Steve Sadow as a criminal attorney, also Chris Smith, because it was, it was difficult to separate fact from fiction, fact being real life and fiction from being the, prosecutor, the prosecutor's story. And Steve, through his skill, was able to really do that in a coherent fashion. So I actually think, and that's sort of the lead in to, I think what I wanna do is do criminal defense work. Well, good luck with that next chapter. I wanna chapter. be able to help people. I wanna be able to help people the way that Steve helped me. Well, we certainly hope you make good on that. Good luck with it. Howard Stern, Steve Sato, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, George.